booktube it's peg at the history shelf um happy friday to everybody hope everyone's doing well out there um made it through another week uh again just hope uh this video finds everyone doing well um i thought i'd come to you with a friday reads video and show you a couple of the books i just recently finished and um and yes i do finish books <laughs> i know the preponderance of my videos our new arrivals but um, I do you know I do read things and I get them done sometimes I just don't report on them uh, if I've shown them once you know I figure you don't need to see them again but I thought this time around I would tell you about a couple of the books I just finished um, and a couple of the books I'm working through right now and what I might have coming up well what I do have coming up um, along with announcing uh, at the end a, uh, a read along for anyone who might be interested uh, but I'll save that till the end all right so let's start with I actually finished this book a couple weeks ago um, but I recently written about it and I can't sing its praises high enough and that is yellow bird oil murder and a woman's search for justice in Indian country by Sierra Crane Murdoch now this was an amazing book and I think it fits nicely into March uh, being Women's History Month and this is a very strong woman, uh, Lissa Yellowbird Chase. Her name, um, in this book she's just known as Lissa Yellowbird, um, who is a, a member of the Mandan, Hidatsa, and Arakara Nation and lives in North Dakota. And this book recounts her, um, just her, this this woman's redemption, um, you know, she had a, a kind of a rough life, I kind of got messed up with some um, unsavory people and practices and drugs, um, went to prison for a couple of years, but then came out rehabilitated, and she just has this drive for justice and trying to find people who are missing, and especially indigenous uh, Native American women who often go missing on reservations or just outside of reservations um, or in her state and um she's a she's a voice she's an advocate and uh she's my new hero um i've go i've like looked up videos with her uh she's she's a really strong-willed woman she's you know uh, and you, you've got to be you know but this book details her um i guess you might call it an obsession with a, a the case a case of a missing oil worker in 2012 um who went missing and the police didn't really have a lead and and she just kind of started doing her own sleuthing and uh and then sierra crane murdoch is the journalist and two years after the young man disappeared you know she started looking into the story just the fact that it was still an open case and nothing had been solved um nobody had been found and um she she was um, brought into contact with uh, Yellowbird. They became uh, kind of like uh, friends, but also both working towards the same end, which is to find out what happened to this young man, Christopher Clark. So uh, this book has like eight years of research and um, uh, Miss Murdoch just, she did uh, like over 200 different interviews. She went through all of the, the um, primary material and documents and it's just well researched, well written, and it speaks to not only the case of this one missing person, but also the other missing persons in a way that, well, not as, as in depth, but she goes into detail about how Lisa Yellowbird then was contacted by other families towards the end of the book to help them find their loved ones. And she actually was critical in finding um, a young woman who had gone missing um, in 2000. 17 I think but anyway this book details that it talks about how the oil boom in North Dakota transformed lives in in the reservation you know it, it brought an increase in crime and um, made a lot of people some people really really rich but the the majority of the Native American community were still struggling so it this just this this is a book that I love books that do this, that make me interested in learning more about something that was previously kind of like just um, cl 
closed off to me in a way that I just hadn't thought about, oh, I should maybe look into this. Well, this made me so interested in it that um, I'm going to be looking for some more materials on um, just how the oil industry um, and, and then the, works on the reservations. And uh, I'm, I'm fascinated by, you know, I, I wrote a little article on the, Oh, the uh, the myth of the Indian Indian casino riches. Um, everyone thinks that uh, the um, the Indians that own Native Americans that own casinos, uh, everyone uh, is just having money falling into their hands. But it's really just only a few people. Um, it just again, it just opened up a whole new world of research for me. I'm fascinated by it. I give this book five stars. Fabulous book. Uh, Yellow Bird by Sarah Crane Murdoch. So um, that was on the nonfiction front. So on the fiction front, I just finished reading this new release by Alma Katsu, and this is The Deep. Um, this is the lady who wrote The Hunger, which was about the Donner Party, and that was more of like a horror novel, which I have, but I haven't read yet. So it's funny, I'm reading her second book before I read her first book. Um, this book is a well over 400 pages. Um, it's, it's, it's set on the Titanic. Um, so immediately I'm very intrigued by that. Um, it's a well-told tale. Uh, the writing is just fine, but I just, um, I found it a little bit confusing as far as the supernatural stuff that was going on. Um, and also an editor was, I think, could have been used to drastically, not drastically, maybe a hundred pages. I, I think this, the story could have been tightened, um, by at least that much to really increase the tension. Uh, and a little bit more time spent on the actual uh, sinking of the Titanic, which to me itself is, you know, we're all drawn to that story. Just So just having a little more time with that, the horror of that moment would have been better served for the nature of this book, which is like a supernatural thriller slash horror but it wasn't really horror wasn't really scary uh had to do a lot with spiritualism um you know the occult and or occultism and, and uh, a little bit of irish lore of the uh do devesa right dove devesa eh, it's uh it's it, it's features in this book as the black lady of the water or the waterfall um who can take people to the deep with her who are innocent souls and they will like live with her forever and she'll make deals with living people for for innocent souls and so that that figures or in here souls? that's like ursula from the little mermaid All right. <laughs> Sorry. it's definitely not ursula from the little mermaid but um <laughs> uh but yeah i just finished this so um i'm i'm I really want to read Alma Katsu's The, the Hunger, and then, I'm, then I can compare the two. Um, but it, she, she did a lot of research for this. Uh, you, you have a lot of the big-name people from the, oh, the big-name people, but like the elites figure in this book. You've got um, uh, John J. Astor and Madeline Astor's young wife, the pregnant wife. You've got the Guggenheims, the Duff Gordon Coopers or something. The Duff Gordons, um, some other some other people, but anyway. So this was the deep. I would give it about, uh, I'd say three three and a half stars. Yeah, decent effort. So the book I'm reading right now, which I'm very engrossed in, considering the times, and I'm taking notes uh, so I can uh, highlight some really interesting facts that I've learned from this book, is Pandemic 1918, um, eyewitness accounts from the Greatest Medical Holocaust in Modern History by Katherine Arnold. Um, there are a lot of books out there on the great, uh, well, The Great Influenza by John Barry, I think is the most well-known. I'd like to read that one. Um, and also, I think Pale Rider, I'm trying to remember the name of the author on that, but Pale Rider was uh, the most, behind this one, it was the most recent book on it, I think. And uh, this one, again, as the subtitle indicates, is the it really focuses on the eyewitness accounts, which I think is a very um, uh, important addition to the field. Um, so I, I'm really relying on this book to get the sense of the on the ground, you know, you are there uh, type of 
storytelling of what happened and what it looked like to the people going through it. Which I know the other two books, The Great Influenza and Pale Rider, will also do that, but that'll be more of a, a straight, in-depth history. Uh, they'll, they go into more depth and detail about uh, the doctors who first encountered it. Um, whereas this one is kind of, uh, it goes through here quickly. I mean, the, the type is very wide spaced. And so, uh, it's, it's a, a relatively quick read. It's about 300 pages, but it doesn't feel like a 300 page book. I'm, I'm really flying through it. I'm about, I'm halfway through it right now. And I got some, uh, I've got some notes here, guys. So I'm enjoying this a lot. I'll report back when I finish. I want to finish this real soon. I'd like to finish this before April 1st as I start some new reading, which I'll talk about at the end of the video. Um, the other book that I am reading is fiction, although I thought it was a memoir, but this was part of my online book club. And uh, this is Tim O'Brien's The Things They Carried, um, set in Vietnam, and the men who fought in Vietnam. And... Uh, you know, it's written, to me, it feels like a memoir, and I learned in the book club that he wrote it as a memoir, even though it's fiction, and, but I, some of it rings so true, and he kind of plays with your, in each chapter, stories weave in and out, they go backwards and forwards with usually the same set of men on this platoon, things overlap, um, that he there's just one there's one chapter that really messes with your mind. I think it's it's called How to Tell a War Story, and you don't know what if up is down, down is up, what's true, what's not true. Um, it, it gets really meta. <laughs> um, but wow, is the writing amazing? It's a page turner. Um, it, it's amazing. I've never read anything quite like it. And I think Tim O'Brien has, he's written something else that I want to read after this. It's called In the Lake of the Woods. Um, and I, I read a synopsis on that one about a husband and wife that go to the, um, their lake house. They're having problems, I think, in their marriage. And then one of, one of them disappears. And then you're just, it's almost like a mystery in a way. But um, this one is just, it shows that his writing is immaculate. I love it. It is so elegant. Um, it's like fine wine, my friends. And I am halfway through with this. All right. And then also, you know, especially in a time where I'm not able to go to, to church, um, I, I have to make sure that I'm kind of doing my own study. And I do my own study anyway, even if I am going to church. But I'm still reading my commentary on the message of John. This is the Bible Speaks Today series, which was the main editor was John R. W. Stott, who was a, a legend in the in the field. Sorry, my hair is starting to fall down. Um, I'm working my way through. I'm doing my uh, the commentary right now is covering uh, chapter. <coughs> Bless you. Goodness. Oh, that's the first time I think I've sneezed on this channel. She's fine. Her temperature's fine. My temperature's fine. Everybody, <laughs> thank you. Um, wow. Yeah, so I'm actually uh, covering, I think, chapter 9. Chapter 9 in the book of John, I'm covering that. I also have some guides that I um, I picked up to do my own private study. I used to go to a Bible study group at my church, and we would, it was called Life Light. And you get these little workbooks. Um, this is the leader guide, but it kind of gives extra answers in case people don't have a question, but I just thought, you know, I'm going to do this for individual study. Um, it's kind of something I work on. Every week you have like a certain set of things to read and then questions and answers. So, you know, that's what I'm doing for that. So that's part of my reading as well, um, is my um, Bible study, theology, that kind of stuff. Much needed gives me a much needed sense of uh, uh, assurance in uncertain times. All right, <clears throat> let me just take a quick sip here. So anyway, 
those are the things that I have read and am currently reading. Um, so uh, I will be reading this book. <laughs> I need to start this one pretty soon, actually. Um, I guess you can call this my April TBR. I'm kind of jumping the gun, but I'll just show, give you a quick uh, show. This is not the. This is an advanced copy or. Or just a printout for a proof, pr proofing or no, uh, review uh, reasons. But anyway, this is Magdalena, River of Dreams, a story of Columbia by Wade Davis. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with Wade Davis, but uh, he's a great writer who's done a lot of like traveling and anthropo anthro anthropological writing. He wrote The Serpent and the Rainbow, um, which was a study of like voodoo, uh, uh, Oh, Haiti and something else, um, which I want to read. It's always been on my things, uh, my list of things to read. But he's written a lot of different books. And again, I mentioned this before on this channel. I love books with like their country studies. You know, I I love learning about other countries and cultures. So this book is actually um, when is it coming out? Oh. Okay, well, it's coming out April 14th. Um, yeah, Wade Davis, let me just look at all these different things she's written. Oh, that just fell out. That just fell out of the... <laughs> I think they quickly just glued this together. <laughs> That's all right. Um, that is more than fine with me. Um, yeah, Wade Davis has written, uh, like, The Lost Amazon, um... Uh, Passage of Darkness, The Serpent and the Rainbow, Into the Silence, um, Grand Canyon, The Wayfinders. Uh, so uh, tons of tons of stuff by this guy, and um, I'm looking forward to learning about Columbia, guys, and the 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 river that runs through it. The river runs through it. Don't say it. I know. It's a nice. Uh, sorry about that. Nice. Uh, I can never get this right. There's a nice map of the country. I'm always, uh, when I read books about countries, I always, I might as well just pull this page out because I'm always um, wanting, wanting to orient myself within the narrative as it's going on. Um, when they say this city is 30 miles from the city, I, I would have to immediately look at a map to make sure, okay. I don't know. It's just the visual pictures in my head that I need to, to place myself. But anyway, this one I'll be starting um, this weekend, tomorrow. Magdalena, River of Dreams. Sorry, I keep hitting my microphone. Uh, okay, so I guess just a little bit of catch up on um, reading plans. I want to give a shout out um, to anyone who might have missed, and I, I was one of them, um, the, uh, the Trollope read along with Steve Donahue for The Way We Live Now. I was so kind of overwhelmed with what was going on in life and work and um, some of these other books I was finishing that I wasn't able to start it. Um, but uh, myself and John David at John David's channel, I will link below, we're going to attempt to read The Way We Live Now starting in April. Um, so if you would like to join us, comment below uh, or comment on John, John's channel. I think he's going to also mention it. Um, and this might be late notice as well, but we're also going to be reading a biography on Henry David Thoreau. So um, I'll try to include that information below as well. Yes. You call it the Tardy Trollope. Oh, yes. Yeah, so we might have a name for this, for the okay. uh, <laughs> the Tardy Trollope read along, because we were the Tardy ones. Uh, apologies to uh, Steve Donahue and the rest. Although, as you know, as we're reading it, we can read, we can watch your videos and, and kind of uh, see what we missed there. But we'll uh, we'll be doing it. So anyone who was not able to do it the first time around, we'll be starting that um, in April, which is what Tuesday of next week. Tuesday next week. Next week sometime. Yeah, all the days run together here. <sighs> um, oh, look at that. Look at my new ring. Woo! I'm showing my new ring off. Got to show the ring bling. <laughs> um, what else? Um, I'm going to be making a video here shortly. 
I'm going to show you the, I'm pretty sure these are, well, I know these are probably the last New York Review of Book Classics that I will get this year. Um, but they are down here and I'm going to pull them out and do a quick video on that. Um, so let's see. Hang on. We got Martine over here. Let's no, see. No. Let's check. Tag as well. You got a new tag coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. It's fun. Come on. You know, I mentioned a while ago that I was working on a tag. Okay. And I thought it was this brilliantly original idea. Then I kind of watched a few other tags that were going around right after the pandemic really started to skyrocket. And I was like, okay, so this isn't too original because other people have already talking about like the hopeful 2.0 tag and being hopeful. And so that's kind of where I was going with mine. Um, but then I, you know, Martine had a great idea for one. We're, st I'm, we're still working out, the, you know, I still got to work it out. <laughs> oh, you can't, you can't drop that and be like, never mind, I'll tell you later. Well, what do you want me to tell them? Tell them. I, I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save it until I know what it exactly is I'm talking do about. Do you think Lizzie Borden did it? Tune in to the left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me. <laughs> oh, wait. oh, I'll never live that one down. Wait until the end of the video, guys, and I'll let you know if Lizzie Borden did it. Yeah. And then I just forgot. <laughs> Left everybody hanging. <laughs> this is what I do on the regular here at the History Shelf. Um, no, so I'm working on an original tag. Um, I do have a plan for bookshelf tours since I am now in, you know, really hardcore lockdown. We're, we really are not wanting to... To, to venture out, uh, except for walks, take the dogs out and stuff. Denver is kind of climbing a bit. And we are a state that is on the full um, school closures, I think. Or wait, full lockdown? Aside from uh, dispensaries, so you can still get caught in boots. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's, That's the great Denver. thing about Colorado is everything else is closed down except the pot shops, the pot shops and the liquor stores, so you know, get wasted during the pandemic, I guess, Ooh. but you know, we don't do that. So, um, we just talk about books instead and our newest obsession on Netflix. Oh, oh I'm going to say it. it. Tiger King. Do yourself a favor, guys. Anyone who has Netflix, um, if you want a crap show, <laughs> like you've never seen, if you like grease fires, if you like grease fires, please watch Tiger King. Uh, mm -hmm. documentary about seven episodes on Netflix it'll suck you right in and you'll feel dirty afterwards mm -hmm. but it's good stuff um, it, you'll feel, you'll, it's, it's a good kind of dirty it's a yeah it's a good kind of dirty I guess but uh, um, so what was I saying so yeah anyway um, I've got a new idea not a new idea but I know how I'm gonna do bookshelf tours I am going to follow along with what Leaf by Leaf did, which I think is brilliant, and I'm just going to be out of the picture entirely. You don't need to see me. You just need to see the books, and uh, it'll be a really quick setup for me so I don't have to worry about lighting and, you know, where, how I'm sitting in the frame and all that kind of st stupid stuff. We just get right to the books. So bookshelf tours will be coming because I have a solution now. Um, we'll continue those, just so you know. Uh, also, um... I'm going to make another video because I've been tagged in a couple of um, book tags that I'm still trying to get some answers for. <laughs> well, I, I know I'm done with the um, the documentary, which documentaries influenced your learning and reading by um, that Bill Rutenberg put together, um, which is a great tag. Thanks for tagging me, Bill. Also, David Murphy. I know I'm a little, uh, I'm tardy. <laughs> it's a theme here. Uh, I'm tardy on the finance book tag. So uh, I'm going to try to get those together this weekend. And what else? Before I wrap up this video and just head right into the next video for the, for the New York Review of Book Classics, uh, hey, if there's a lone soul out there that's bored, please do me a favor. I'm sitting at 699 subscribers. <laughs> Someone could just hit subscribe to woo, put me up to 700. Wow, would that be just a, a just a, a lovely little thrill in these in these bleak dark times? So, anyway, I do think um, all of you guys who subscribe and are just regular commenters, I love all you guys. You're so much fun, and I promise I'm I'm working on responses. I know I'm a little bit behind from my last videos re replying, but you know I always reply. Um, 
But anyway, I hope everyone's doing well. I'm going to go ahead and get this video up. Hopefully the internet is, you know, working fast enough to do it. And I, I, I'm hearing things about the internet or the, you know, is about to crash at some point. So, well, they said the internet is creaking and groaning. It's bursting at the seam, ripping at the seams. Like, well, it's all the people just doing everything now from home, it seems. So, all right. Guys, that's my Friday reads and various sundry other thoughts. I uh, hope you're doing well. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye.